So I'm waiting to Um Welcome to this video lesson on um, chapter 34, and we are halfway through section 2, um, starting here at line 112, where we are reading another poem of Catullus. We wamus melis beaquiamamus, uh, amemus rather, sorry. Let's live, my lesbia, and let's love. Notice amemus and we wamus both have the vowel change present subjunctive. Rumores quesenum severiorum omnes unius aestimemus asis. And let us esteem or value the rumors of rather strict, rather severe old men, all, and then unius asis is the genitive, so I'm going to do it as a genitive of value, all as worth one as. Now an as is a small value copper coin, so or bronze coin, so you could just say, um, let us, and let us esteem the rumors of rather strict old men, all as worth one penny, right, to give an, a modern equivalent. Okay, so again here, the genitive case on unius asis, that's called a genitive of, of indefinite value, and that's why you can say worth a penny there. Soles o kider et redire posunt. Sons are able to set. Remember, sol o cadence is the setting sun or the west. And to return. All right, sons can set and return, that is come back. Nobis, for us. Cum simul ocidit brevis lux, when once the short light has set, or is setting, notes es perpetua una dormienda. There's one perpetual night to be slept. Dormienda, notice the nd, um, and then the feminine ending agreeing with notes. This is a gerundive. One perpetual night must be slept. Now what he's saying is suns can rise or can set and come back again, yes, for us, but when once the short light, light is set, I think this is the light of life, right? One perpetual night must be slept, meaning we'll all be dead and there will be no more, right? Da mi basia mile, give me a thousand kisses. Okay, basium is a synonym for osculum, and a basium or a swawium, if anything, is, is perhaps a little more passionate. These are two other words for kisses, basium and swawium. Um, so give me a thousand kisses. Dein de quinto, then a hundred. Dein milautra, then another thousand. Dein secunda quinto, then a second hundred. Dein dus quadra mille, dein quintum, then right up to another mil, uh, another thousand rather, then a hundred. Dein cum milia multa fecerimus, then when we will have made many thousands, cantor babimus illa nesciamus, then we will um, <laughs> sort of mix them up, disturb them, right? I think mix up is good here. Then we'll mix them up, meaning mix up the number of kisses. Nesciamos, so that we don't know. Aut ne quis malus imodere poset, or that not any evil person would be able to invidere. Now, what does this mean? Um, in its most basic sense, it means to sort of glare at somebody, to look into them, right? Um, so if you give somebody the, the stink eye, right, the evil eye, um, the glare, right, that's what it means. Um, of course, envy comes from this, and sometimes it can mean to envy or begrudge. But then one last thing you need to know that's related to the ancient world is that uh, you could cast a spell of invidia uh, and curse somebody right? But you had to know certain personal information about them to be able to do that. So if you knew the exact number of kisses that they had made here, that could give you power in your curse spell. And yes, they took these things seriously. They wrote up, witches would write up lead tablets and you would stab through the, the lead tablet with, a, with a, a pen or something and you'd bury it under the ground and hopefully then your curse would come true. 
All right. Cum tantum sciat esse basiorum. When he knew so that there were so much of the kisses. Or since he knew that there were so much of the kisses. So to take these two last lines together, or so that no evil person could envy us or could curse us since he knew um, that the kisses were of that there were so much of the kisses basically again you don't want him to know the exact amount because they're cursed their inuidia might come off better Catullus lesbiam uxorem ducere cupiebat Catullus wanted to lead lesbia as his wife to take her as his wife is the normal English idiom um, this is a Latin idiom for Mary, right? Ducere uxorem. Nec vero ila Catullo nupsit. Nor indeed did she marry Catullus. So the normal thing in, in Latin for a guy is to ducere a woman as uxorem. And for a woman, if you marry a man in Latin, you use the verb nubo nubere, which we see out in the margin here. And nupsit here is the, from the perfect tense of that. Nor indeed did she marry Catullus, and you'll notice Catullus is in the dative because with this verb for a uh, woman marrying, the nubo nubere verb, it takes a dative for the man that they marry, or I guess the woman too. Etsi affirmabat, even if, um, even if she affirmed, se nulli alii viro nubere male, that she preferred male. To marry, nubere, no other man. Mox vera o poeta de verbiseius dubitari coipit. But soon the poet began to doubt about her words. All right, and here is Catullus speaking about his doubt about lesbia. Nulli se dicit mulier mea nubere male, quam mihi. My woman, mulier mea, says that she prefers to marry no one rather than me. Non si se Jupiter ipse petat, not if Jupiter himself should seek her. So that is to say, not even if Jupiter himself should be wanting to marry her. Dicit, she says it, sed mulier cupido quod dicit amanti, in ventet rapida scriber aporte qua. But a woman, but what a woman says, let's do it this way, the quod mulier dicit, take those together. What a woman says, cupido amanti, to a desiring lover, and of course this would be Catullus in this instance, oportet, ought, uh, you ought to write in the wind and in the rapid water. Now, of course, if you write something in the wind or the rapid water, don't think it's going to stay there very long, right? Even if you can get it written there somehow, anyhow. All right. So the point is, yeah, if we're talking about a girlfriend saying something to a lover, don't necessarily trust it. She might just be trying to work him for money. So this is the cynical Catullus coming in after Lesbia has given him some reason to doubt their love. And she gives him a lot of reason to doubt the love. She apparently had affairs with a number of other people. Postremo poet intellexit, lesbiam infidam et amore suo indignam esse. At last, Postremo, the poet understood that lesbia was faithless, unfaithful, and unworthy of his love, suo amore. Nequitam indesiet eam amare, nor nevertheless did he stop loving her. Ecce duo versus, que mentem poetae dolentem ac dubiam inter amorem et odium demonstrat. Two verses which show, demonstrat, the mind of the poet grieving and doubtful between love and hate. Okay. This is something that sometimes happens in love. You love somebody, but you also hate what they're doing to you, and you can't sort of deal with your feelings. And Catullus is a very passionate person. This is one of his most famous poems, Catullus 85. 
O that I'm o, I hate and I love. Quare id faciam? Why should I do this? Fortasse recrigeris? Perhaps you ask? Nescio, I don't know. Sed fiere sintio, but I feel it's happening. Et excrucior, and I am tortured. I am crucified, right? So strong language here, metaphor for the feelings that he, the pain that he's experiencing in his love. He swear sibus recitatis, with these verses having been read, another ablative absolute, Conviwai diu plaudunt, the um, guests applaud, clap for a long time. So they apparently liked that one. Pum Paula, then Paula. Now, uh, this is the wife of Orontes, who I think is now drunk and carried off to another room because he drank too much. Yam satis inquit audivimus de amando e de dolendo. Now we have heard enough about loving and about hurting. Ego ridere malo. I prefer to laugh. Neque, neque iste poeta risum excitat. Nor does that poet of yours uh, arouse laughter. Now the poems they're quoting from Catullus are not particularly funny, but he does have some funny poems. But she's not interested in these love poems, so let's see what she has to suggest. Queen Versus Jocosus Recitas Nobis. Why do you not recite um, some joking verses, some humorous verses for us? Okay. Queen is um, sometimes best understood as cur known, so why not? Cui Julius, at Cotulus inquit, to whom Julius says, But Catullus, non tantum carmina seria, sed etiam jucosa scripts it. Catullus not only wrote serious poems, carmina seria, but also humorous ones, jucosa. Ecce versus, behold these verses. Quibus, poeta, in which the poet, pauper, the poor poet, quindam amicum divitim, nomine fabulum ad canam mocavit, which the poor poet invited a certain rich friend by the name of Fabulus to dinner. So here is a poem. And again, this is a, a dinner invitation. Que nabibus binim mi fabulier, apud me, paucis, si tibidi fawint diebus. You will dine well, my fabulous, at my place, apud me, in a few days, Palkis and Diebus go together, if the gods favor you. Okay. So, seems like he's inviting him over for dinner in a few days. You'll dine well at my place, my fabulous, in a few days, if the gods favor you. Si te catuleris bon atque magnam kenam, Non sine candida puella et win et sal et omnibus cacinis. <laughs> All right, now here's kind of the beginning of the joke. If you will have brought with you a good and big dinner, not without a um, fair skinned girl, candidus means bright white, and sometimes it, it in, implies um, kind of uh beautiful all right as they say in the margin condita equals pulchra um, but i think it, it it has to do with her glistening beauty okay not without a a fair girl and wine and salt and all of the the giggles all the laughs okay Cock, cockiness is a word for laughter okay so what did he just say you'll dine well in a few days if you bring all the stuff, you got to bring. You got to bring the dinner. You got to bring a good-looking girl. Got to bring the wine. Got to bring the salt for the food, and you got to bring lots of laughs. Okay, so bring your own entertainment, as it were. Haik si in quam atuleris venus de noster, kenabimus bene. These things, if you have brought them, I say, our charming friend, venus de noster. 
you will dine well. So yeah, as long as you bring all that stuff, you know, you're going to have a good dinner. Nam tui catulli plenus saculus est araniarum. For your Catullus's little sack, saculus is like a money purse, right? Is full of, guess what? Spider webs. <laughs> okay, so the point is, Catullus, who actually came from a wealthy family, at least from his point of view, feels he's rather poor, rather uh, doesn't have enough money for a fancy dinner right now. And Fabulous perhaps is doing better. Okay, well that gets us to the end of our section two. We'll have another video lesson to finish up this story next time. Well, later, omnes.